All right, so the last thing I want to go over is um, the array parameters. I'm not going to go over the X and Y stuff. You can kind of figure it out on your own, but the X and Y stuff just controls things in two different directions. Um, and you can, with, with varying numbers of grips. Um, but, I mean, I feel like I should go over the X, Y stuff because I'm going over the dynamic blocks. Um, but honestly, I'm just lazy. I'm sorry. I, maybe I'll go to, I'll get back to it and add to the series later, but I, the, the, you've learned the bulk of things. We'll do the, uh, linear array, but for the, the linear array, I want to do something different. I need a different, uh, symbol, I guess. I'm just going to put a circle actually. Okay. I'm going to block it. I know it's kind of simple, but we'll put circle base point at the center, select objects. Okay. Got our, got our block. Let's do a block edit now on this simple little circle. And we're going to do a linear array first. Okay. But I can array this as it is. But what I like to do is start with the first object. So I'm going to put this six inches away. Now let's put it three inches away. A little easier. Okay. This way, when I do my linear move, I can go from center to center and know exactly what I'm going to array. Did I do a linear move pair? I did actually linear array. There we go. Just the one grip. Okay. Select our objects. Now I only want to array this object. So it's the one I'm going to copy. So I'm going to, uh, let's see. new selection set done. Okay. So let's go ahead and there's before we can start arraying, one of the things you have to consider, and this is, I'm a little ahead of myself because I'm going to do a separate video related to this is you need to select the action itself and change, go to your properties and change the column offset. Now row offset is not editable because we are not doing a row array. If I, if this, if this dimension was going up and down rather than left and right, uh, it would be, you would modify the row parameter, but I mean the row property, but it, we're not, we have to edit the column property. And by default, the column is set to one inch. We don't want to array this thing one inch. And I'll show you why. If we array this thing one inch, remember we copied this over three inches, right? This is three inch over. So I'm going to test this block. <clears throat> and I promised myself I would restart CAD before this video and I didn't. So I hope this thing don't freeze up. What happens is because I, I, even though I copied this thing three inches, because I set the array column distance to one, this thing is only going to array every one inch. So how close they are together. If I want this thing to be arrayed the same distance, what I need to do is set the array distance on this to three inches to match what I copied it over. So I'm going to select this action, go change my array distance to three and test this block again. Now, when I go to array, you can see that it's putting it at three inches. Okay. Another thing you'll notice is the grip, right? The grip is not exactly lined up with the center of these things. I can kind of put the grip wherever I want and it, it will, it will control. It still controls the array, but it's not exactly like lined up. You know, it, it's movable. That's because of the parameter, not the action. So we modified the action here. The parameter itself can be modified as well. I can change the increment here. I can change it, the distance type from none to increment and what happens is this forces me to move in set increments so instead of uh, being able to freely move that grip I can say move that grip every three inches and you can see the tick marks here that indicate that it's set to increment at every three inches if I change this to like one inch those grips will get smaller and cl or closer together so I'll put it at one and you can see they get a lot closer together but I want this this increment at three all right, so when I go test this block again, what it's going to do now is the grip is also going to move in three inch increments, which is nice because whenever I go to add uh, new objects with this array, the grip will always be in the center of the circle because the array is set to copy every three inches and the grip is set to uh, move every three inches. So it's nice for keeping things in you know, nice and, and neat and tucked together, all, they all vibe together. Okay. Something that you need to understand also <clears throat> is that if, 
I this may maybe something that comes up later on. So we associated this array parameter and action with this object. Let's say I erase this because I don't like it or whatever, and I go do a new linear array and I put it at the same distance, right? And it's gonna ask me to make objects, right? Or associate objects, right? Let's say I'm doing a new array. So I go to action selection set new. When I go to select this object, it's gonna say um, one object already associated with an array action. That's because I previously had this object associated <coughs> with an array action. So <coughs> the only way to get this as part of the new array set is to cut either undo till you get back to before you deleted that old parameter or erase it and copy a new one because the new one will not be associated with a previous uh, array parameter. And now we can do a new selection set and add this and everything's gravy. Now this is associated together. So keep that kind of thing in mind. And then briefly, I'll just real quick show you the linear, sorry, the XY array, since we're already here. Let's go ahead and copy uh, these things up three inches, working in an X and Y. We'll start from here and we'll go to here. And what we've got now is so our selection set. We want to include this one, this one, and this is probably not that these two will work. This one probably won't because I previously had an array associated with it. Um, so I have to erase this and copy another one. Modify and add it. There we go. You can see them all, all lighting up. Okay. So now these will move, but again, I have to click this action and go and set my, now I get the row and column because it's an X, Y. So I want to choose three and three for them to uh, offset properly. And as far as my parameters, <coughs> X and Y, it's kind of the same deal. I can do horizontal type increment, vertical type uh, increment, and set these both to three so that my, again, so that my grip moves in three inch increments in both directions. Uh, we should be set to three in both directions. We are. And there we are. All right. And so we're ready to test this block. And we froze. Man, I really thought I could get through this video without one freeze, but it looks like that's just it. So. I'll explain to you now. You, you'll notice that you have three grips. You can choose any one of those grips um, to make your array, but no, they function differently. Um, if you choose the the top left array, editing it is different. Okay, so we're good to go. So you'll see when I select this, I've got four grips, the insertion. Okay. Actually, it'll ray backwards. Look at that. Learn something new every day. So look, we got linear array up. We've got linear array to the right. Uh, we've got linear array down and linear array to the left. Okay. Turn the ortho off. Um, and we actually probably can go all four directions. Broop. Mm, broop. So I lied to you and I really wish that I had the video editing. So remember, I do everything on the fly here and uh, I don't really work with Linux with X, Y arrays very often. So I, when I did this video earlier, I was under the impression that this was only a linear array in this one direction. But now I'm understanding that each one of these directions will just array in a different direction of the X, Y. So, and then selecting it with our properties. Um, what we get here is basically, these are three inch increments. So I can choose like, 
um, I could say like six and six will go that right. But if I wanted to go the opposite direction, I could say like negative six. And are you not doing negative sixes? Let's see what happens when I go the opposite direction this way then. Mm. It just makes it bigger. Unintended consequences. But I really don't use the uh, linear array all that often. I mean, the XY array. I mean, it works as intended in some directions. I mean, it works like it's supposed to. It creates the array. Um, I wouldn't use the properties on this. It might be a little confusing unless you, you know. This is. XY arrays are not my expertise, but. They definitely can come in handy if you need them to. I'll say that much. This, however, is still the insertion point of your block. Uh, one of the issues with creating your array at the insertion point of your block is that you're...